Got me sweating like Woo. black hoodie, black tins, black leather jacket, sun beating on my black skin, black queen. When we say the black of the bird, make a spectacular church. No, I got more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, first, I thank y'all for coming here to do this project for me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, we're going to start off by everybody going around saying their name, um, age, and major or job. And Ariel, I'm 22. Graduated from James Madison University, praise God, with a degree in biology. Really? And, yeah. And right now, I'm working at Walmart. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, I'm a banana of uh, Apoku, and I am uh, 20, and I am at Jamie still, um, and I am a health sciences major, concentration, health studies, with a minor in biology and a minor in art as well. Okay. Also, can you say your ethnicity slash race? So, uh, I am African American. I would like to be black, though. Okay, we'll come back to why you okay. say that. Um, I'm African slash African American. Hi, um, I'm Zoe Taffy. I'm 24 years old. I'm still here at JMU, but I'm back getting my master's in communication and advocacy with a concentration in health. And um, I identify as just Hello there. My name is Sarah Johnson. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sarah Johnson. I'm a senior with a major in justice studies, a concentration in social justice, and a minor in women and gender studies. And I identify as black slash African American. Okay, we'll move into that as well. So, first, um, how did y'all feel about the first clip, uh, which was the African American or the black ex perspective on the relationships between African Americans and Africans? Then if I can go first. And make sure to project your voice. Um, so it's not really new to me, but I feel like there is a disconnect because I feel like African Americans are going to feel however they feel, like they were born here, and so, you know, their experiences are going to be different than somebody who was, like, born in Africa and came here, or, like, their parents were Af are African and they were born here, like, the experiences are different, so, like... I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit biased because I am African, so like that's all I know. That's the only experience that I know. Yeah, like I've I've heard like the same similar things as well. Um, you know, and like I did see like one point that she made about like um, I like that was she how she clarified it the um, what's it called the privilege. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it really does have to do with education because like as she said like back. Like, in uh, in many countries within Africa, like, education is not that mm -hmm. easy to come by. And that's why a lot of them work so hard to come to America or to go to, like, England, to go, basically to go elsewhere. And so, like, sometimes when they come to places like this and they see, like, lackluster stuff and, like, they're, and, like, they're feeling like they're, they're working and striving so hard to make sure to, like, they can secure, like, knowledge and secure like jobs to maybe like go back and like help better their countries um yeah so i i, I could see that like as part of like as why sometimes um so africans can be like judgmental you know because like because yeah because they'll, they'll, they'll feel as if like oh like you get like you know i know there is a lot of like you know um there's a lot of stuff like that comes down on like the black Americans and within like especially the US um, government and stuff like that. But like education wise, it's like you got it, you gotta work yeah. for it and stuff like that. And it's like sometimes they're not. So you know. I definitely have to agree because back home, like like she was saying in the clip, like you pay for school, like from preschool, daycare, whatever, until like you're done. Like you're done done. And so, like, you know, I went to school back home, and most schools are private. Like, public education is not a thing. Like, 
you don't have that luxury of just walking into a school and be like, oh, register your kid, we just need to know where you live, and boom, like, you can go to school the next day. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. Like, you pay school fees, like, you have to wear a uniform. And so, that's why... your hair so Yeah, yeah like, some people have... Like, there's so many things that you have to go through just to get an education. So, like, as, you know, like, Africans and our parents coming up here and bringing us here or, like, coming here and us being born here, like, education is huge because... Um, and not to say that, you know, black Americans have this luxury, but like for Africans, like we have nothing to fall back on. Like my parents remind me every day, like we don't have no trust fund. We don't have any investments. We don't have anything for you. All we have to give you is your education. And so it is, it's a struggle because when your parents see like other, like your classmates, like not really taking advantage of the fact that you can literally just kind of go to school and not really have to worry about it then yeah it becomes an issue and I think that's where that whole like laziness component comes mm -hmm. in because it's like yes there is oppression and you know there are a lot of issues that black Americans deal with but one thing that you cannot say is that you're not educated. given yeah like education is an option for you mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and it's up to you to go or not to go mm -hmm. and I think that's really where, like, the laziness part comes in. And also because of the fact that, like, if we're talking about government, like, the U.S. government does have resources put into place to help certain individuals. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing back home. Like, you're poor, you're poor. Like, there is no WIC. There is no, you know, food stamps. Like, you hungry, you hungry. And that's your own personal problem. Mm -hmm. So, once again, I think that speaks to that component of, like, laziness or maybe like lackluster behavior like knowing that there are certain resources that could be to your advantage and some people don't really mm -hmm. take advantage of them yeah yeah um i was really glad when the video the woman in the video when she come like clarify what privilege y'all were talking about not y'all but like in the film and um yeah the u.s is very privileged when it comes to public um education and we do, we are privileged also when it comes to financial aid, when it comes to scholarships, so that's definitely a privilege for Americans as a whole, not just black Americans, but Americans overall. But what, the thing that I found issue with, in like listening to y'all talk and also be thinking about what was in the video, was the lazy part, and, but that's just because of, I don't want to say because of like my major specifically, because, but mainly because of what I learned in college and what black people do have to go through in American society public education for people of color, not just black people, people of color is terrible. Terrible. It's a privilege in that it's free, and it's a privilege in that those who are able to go to college, thank God, you know, my college is paid for, you know, that's that's a blessing from God, it's a privilege in itself. But when we're talking about from the time uh, a child, a person of color specifically, is young, to the time where they're in high school, where they're able to apply for college. From the education from when they're young to high school, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And for people of color, one way for them to get a good education, not a true education, because what they teach us in schools, we know that's not true. But a good education now gets you to college, you have to pay for it. Private school. Or you have the, um, what is it, the suburb schools, where majority of them are white. So when we're talking about if we're when we're talking about you know education, we have to talk about where these kids are getting educated at. And most people, most people of color get educated at inner city schools. And inner city schools are the books, the computers, the technology, other technology. The teachers they're paid by the amount of money the neighborhood makes. So if you go to our inner one, nine times out of ten, inner schools are not best schools because the people around them don't make enough money. So their taxes that go so the taxes that go to the schools are not where it should be as far as like Henrico. Like in Virginia, Henrico schools are great. But that's because a lot of white people live in that area and they also make a lot of money. But like the school I went to, the area that we are in, nobody makes money. You know what I'm saying? So when we look at inner city schools, the majority people of color. And then the uh, poverty levels are pretty high. And even if it's not uh, stricken with poverty, the levels for, by which they can take taxes out and give it towards the school is not high at all. So I feel like the whole lazy thing I just found problematic because it's just kind of like, 
I get where y'all are coming from. I can't understand it because I'm not African. But I get where y'all coming from when y'all come here and y'all see, you know, like people not really putting in the full effort. But we have to think about how these kids were, how these kids were born into a system that does not give a fuck about black kids. And we have to think about where these kids go to school at. You know what I'm saying? If these kids have better education, better schools, better technology, and better books, they would be a lot further than where we are now. So that's the only thing I found like problematic with the lazy thing. But that's coming from a person that that's educated on the topic. And I'm not calling y'all educated, not educated at all. But I had to learn this stuff, you know, with my major and everything. So it's like, I feel like we need definitely to educate ourselves and then educate, like, other people. Because I feel like the whole lazy thing can be, like, very problematic. Because it's not fair. It's not fair. Now, that sounds like an excuse. Like, you know how people say, I don't want to use my race as an excuse. And I'll always say it's not an excuse to reality. It's not fair. You know? For example, my mother, very educated woman, she worked hard for her education. But she also suffered... Um, from consequences with it too. Like for example, when she graduated high school, she got accepted into a couple of colleges. Her guidance counselor hid it from her until she found out that they had it and had to was like, you need to give me my stuff before I turn you in. It's stuff like that that, you know, make like like mind you, she's older, but that still happens today with our kids today. You know what I'm saying? My guidance counselor at my school didn't even tell me about scholarships. That's true. When they're, when they're supposed to. That's funny. So. Yeah, no, but see, my dad, it's the same story, similar story. So my dad, he's very, very educated. But, I mean, like, he was born in a time during segregation. Mm -hmm. So, like, up until, like, cared about him. Mm -hmm. So when he went to the white school and he did well in white school, they didn't get no recognition. They didn't care. Like, and so his guidance counselor, while he was trying to, he, he decided to go to school because his friends, one of his friends were going to school. So I found a state. And um, when his guidance counselor was like, well, no, I'm not going to help you. And he was like, why? He was like, she's like, I can help you get into trade school. I can help you get into vocational school. And he's like, she's like, I just feel like that would be better for you. And he's like, mm, no. And that's like an uh, inspiration for him to go to college. So he went to college, um, graduated some cum laude, and he got, went to University of Carolina and got his master's. Uh -huh. um, all from that inspiration. But unfortunately, not all those kids, all those, some kids hear that. And they're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I should no, just go ahead and be a welder. You know, yeah. and it's like, it, it's sad to say, but it's just like, we got to think about stuff like that, too. We don't think that y'all, mm -hmm. obviously, because we have that knowledge. Our friends mm -hmm. are, you know, African-American or black, whichever term you want to use. So we understand that. But mm -hmm. I think it's more so our parents mm -hmm. are the when ones. Because when they came over. Yeah, when they, mm -hmm. were, they did not know. They don't know any of that. Like, mm -hmm. And like, to be honest, some of them, some of them still may not know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And that's the thing. Because... I, like, it is, like this isn't something that's public knowledge because, you it's know, not. they try to keep stuff like this under wraps. You know, there's stuff going around in your own backyard. But, yeah, America wants to go out mm -hmm. and, like, do all these other things in all of these other places. But, like, stuff like this, yeah, to keep it, like, it's not on the news. It's not in, like, yeah. newspapers, like, unless you actually live in that area or close to that area. Mm -hmm. And um, I know generally a lot of, at least I know my family, like, my dad's side of the family, like, when... When they, whenever they're coming, like we are all like they're all like centered around Alexandria, like uh, Alexandria, Northern Virginia. So it's either you're in that city or like you're in like a suburban area, like around that city somewhere. And like, you know, like I'm not saying that Alexandria is like the best place or whatever, but like I'm like I guess like those those schools compared to like maybe schools in like other areas aren't going through like what you were talking about stuff like that. So, like, to them, like, it's still something they don't realize mm -hmm. because they're like, oh, like, T.C. Williams is a good, is a pretty good public school. Um, there's private schools in that area, mm -hmm. and there's other, like, um, I went to private school, but I know my public school system was also pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, um, the Prince William County system is really good, and, like, stuff like that, so. Yeah, like, I have that, I have that issue more so with my dad than anything else, like, you know, my dad is like what almost sixty, so he's very much stuck in that, old like mindset. that old mindset. And I feel like we've gone to college, so we've taken the classes, like we get it. But to get our parents to wrap their mind around the idea that people really aren't lazy is the system that doesn't allow them to prosper. Mm -hmm. I think is what is what the issue is. And so I feel like as we're moving forward generationally, I don't feel like that's going to be the perception, but. That's really not gonna happen until our parents die. I hate to put it. I mean, I hate to say yeah, it like yeah. that, but like, mm -hmm. once our parents die, then you know, I feel like that mindset dies along with them because mm -hmm. 
we get it. We we know because we a lot it. of I even have that problem. Like not that like problem like where, but like just ge- just generally older Africans are very narrow minded. Mm-hmm. And like I'm saying that as in like personally, like you know, I try to like do stuff. You know, oh like can I go here with my friends? Can I go do this? Can I do this? It's very like no, narrow, like it's yeah. very like you can't you can't be here. You can't do that. You have to stay home or you have to go to school here. Mm-hmm. You can't go to school in New York. You have to like go to like you know like. Yeah, like, they're very, like, their strictness mm-hmm. is, like, a very, like, they see one thing, and that's, that's what all it. they're pushing for. And, like, the main thing, like, yeah, like, wow, it's, like, it's, like, an education, like, make sure you get a good job, make sure you get good grades, make sure you, like, 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 a lot, a lot like, that's what I, like, I don't know if you hear it sometimes, but it's, like, like oh, when you're African and you tell your mom you don't want to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, freaking and out. then like it's like a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you gonna do with your life? You know, you have to like, like they don't really see like their big picture is like doctor, lawyer, like big. Like, I mean, not saying that other stuff isn't big, but like they're like looking towards those type of goals. Well, know? I can I can relate to that. I mean, my dad's was Indian, so I can relate mm-hmm. to the whole strictness thing. Like, not the mm-hmm. maybe not the lawyer part because I told me I'm not being lawyer, brother. That happened. <laughs> but like the whole strictness thing in terms of like. Yeah, have to get an education like that's why for me graduating college is it's not i'm not gonna say it's not a big deal because it's a big deal i mean hello but it, it's not like oh my god i'm graduating college because it was expected right. of me especially yeah. from my dad mm-hmm. go to college da, da, da. so mm-hmm. i can i can really on that yeah like i I personally feel like black people and african people feel differently about the movie mm-hmm. um just based on the articles and videos i've watched mm-hmm. you know so eric can you like give your personal perspective of feelings about what Black Panther is or what it means to you or how you feel about it. Yeah, so I think Black Panther, um, honestly, I feel like it was a movie of encouragement for Black Americans right now. Um, I don't think that it was thinking about Africa at all. It was more so like a a cute version of Africa for us, if that makes sense. It's like, okay, so if this was... And, you know, I actually read something, too, about uh, white people using Black Panther as an excuse for, like, their white supremacy. Mm. It's like, see, black people are great when they're not around us, so they should be by themselves. That's mm. why white supremacy is, gra- that's, this is proof that white supremacy works. Uh, mm, sure. And I was like, okay, <laughs> y'all go find anyway. Black Panther was not for that, honestly. Mm. But I like the movie. I like, I just didn't like <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, uh, I forget what his name was, T'Challa, whoever played T- T'Challa. Charlie I feel like, like me and Zone were talking about earlier, um, I feel like I agree with her when she was like, if you're not African, there's no reason to try and imitate the accent. Mm. Just talk how you would normally talk. Mm. Um, and Well, a lot of, so a lot of the characters in there that who would identify as like African American or Black American have like some type of ties to some African country or West Indian cool, fine, that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, my issue, I don't want to say issue, because that makes it seem like I don't like the movie. The movie was popping. Uh-huh. Great. It was a great movie. My slight concern is the fact that you're not African and you're using an African accent. And the thing is, Africa consists of so many countries that you can't just sit there and be like, mm-hmm. I'm going to use this, Af- this accent and it's going to be reflective of this entire mm-hmm. continent. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work. Like, if you talk to somebody from Ethiopia, they sound completely different from somebody who's from Ghana or Senegal or, you know, Congo or, like, Mozambique. So, like, I feel like it would have been just better to use your regular voice. Okay, so, moral of the story is, I was lit when Black Panther came out. It's inspired my soul. I was so excited to see all these black people in the movie theater, um, especially at this time of unrest and black bodies all over these concretes and, you know, stuff like that. It was just like, yay, finally a movie. For us, but then I was like, you know, me being woke, I was like, Lord, it's not for us, though. They're trying to portray Africa, and it got nothing to do with me. Um, and also, um, I didn't. I feel like some people went to that movie and bought like, you know, traditional African clothing and cl- cloth, and didn't stop and think about what they were doing, but rather, oh, they look like this in the movie, so sh- I will too. Mm. Like, and and that was my perspective. But I loved the movie. The movie was lit. Yeah, I mean, I thought I loved me the black. I thought it was dope. I loved it. I loved, like you said, having all the black people in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Um, and not just black people, but Africans too, but people who look like us in the movie theater all together. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. I appreciated the fact that there was strong black women or strong 
black women who portrayed as Africans, mm. strong women of color. You know, like, I just really appreciated having strong women of color on the TV screen that looked like me. Mm. Um, I do think they could have found people who, some of the characters who weren't African, I feel like they could have found people who were African to play those roles. Mm -hmm. um, that was just, like, my only thing. I don't know, I don't, I guess T'Challa has, has a ties to Africa, but I don't know if he's directly African, but that was, that was one of the things for me when I, when I was told that he wasn't African, I was like, they could have just found someone who's African to play the Black Panther, but... Yeah, other than that, I really love the movie. I she was um, Shuri. Um, yeah. Other than that, I really love the movie. Um, the whole wearing garments thing, I think, like I said, that comes from people not really being educated. Mm -hmm. So I try not to get upset, just in general, when it comes to people and them being uneducated. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you get upset from time to time, but I really try not to get upset when it comes to certain things because they just don't know. You know what I'm saying? They just don't know. And so. I can't really hold that against them. All you can do is really just educate them and then take it how they take it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I do think Black Panther mainly appeal, appealed to Black Americans. Kind of like the surf, surface level of Africa and like how great it is and everything. I understood where I could relate to Killmonger. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people in the movie I could relate to mm -hmm. as a Black woman. Be, not the whole violence against women thing. Wow. Like I said, he was kind of crazy. <laughs> He was kind of crazy. We need to understand that. But his anger, I understood his mm, anger. Okay. I understood his anger towards Wakanda and how they did not help their own people in terms of when they were um, being forced into slavery. And then on terms, they didn't come to America. They didn't try to save us. So I understood his anger. I understood. I understood where he was coming from, and I understood why he felt the way that he felt. Mm. And I also understood that he was a part of his environment. Mm. They left him there. Mm to rot they left him there to rot mm -hmm. when they could have easily just taken him back and been mm -hmm. okay go, go play so it's like <laughs> i couldn't understand where you know he was coming from and as a black american i don't i would i don't know like if i hear if i would have heard other black americans say that they couldn't relate to killmonger i'd be like how mm -hmm. how could you not relate to to him how could you not relate to his anger his frustration with wakanda period or just with the u.s period mm -hmm. his want to take back his wanting to take back the power that white people took from us. Mm. How could you not relate to that mm. as a black American? You know what I'm saying? So I completely related to Killmonger when it came to that. I mean, of course, with the other stuff. He was on some other stuff. I don't know what that was about. Okay. But when it came to the anger that he had, it was kind of when it came to the anger that he had towards white people, period. When it came to really t him taking our power back. And even when he died in the end, he was like, burn me in the ocean mm -hmm. where my ancestors are. That was dope. That I was like, yo, I felt that. I was mm -hmm. like, that right there is exactly we here came on the movie. <laughs> but um, other than that, like, I just love the movie. Now I'm gonna see it again. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it really did. I feel like tailored to black mm -hmm. Americans. I mean, the whole Wakanda thing is not really reflect quite reflective of what's going on in Africa right mm -hmm. now. Um, there are a lot of nations who are doing great things, whatever, whatever, but I feel like, no, what I said, Wakanda, Wakanda <laughs> doesn't focus on the fact that, yes, there are countries in Africa who are great and people are not running around hungry. However, there are, like, systematic infrastructural mm -hmm. issues that were not being highlighted. And I think it's great, surface level, to be like, you know, Africa is popping, but it's just not reflective of what's really going on in the continent. Now, if we want to talk about the whole, well, <coughs> why didn't Wakanda go back and help the people who were enslaved, yada, yada, yada. That's my other issue with the movie. Because that's also not reflective of what's happening in Africa. Mm. Like, we don't have anything to come and save our people who are here. Mm. Because everything was stripped away from us. So. A lot, of people, a lot of people are feeling like black people when they get a certain status in America or they get money they need to invest in Africa they feel like there's an issue with black people not investing yeah. in Africa but investing in other places yeah. but I will say well, I will say Black Panther did kind of point to some of the infrastructure in the beginning when the general the woman general um, and oh, okay. and the child were like on the on the plane mm -hmm. aircraft whatever mm -hmm. and they went down to save the people who were the mm -hmm. women who were probably going to be sex slaves mm -hmm. uh, okay oh yeah that was a quick too. little yeah yeah so they did a little yeah. quick you know the quick thing yeah it's so a quick that, little that, like that, I, I, they did point to some of the yeah. it's a quick know, little like oh okay you know some slight issues going quick. on in Africa but but not overall but yeah. not overall and I feel like you know 
Wakanda is really romanticized, and I think Wakanda ro is romanticized to the point that, excuse me, low key, there are some black Americans out here who really, I feel like they low key be thinking like Wakanda is a real place, no. and I'm like, no, they do, yeah. <laughs> people are taking it, yeah, seriously. like yeah. people are taking it to another level. Like even when I. Be, you know, scroll on my timeline on Twitter, like it'll be like African children dancing or people doing yeah. African and then, dance. And it's Wakanda forever. Oh, Wakanda and like forever. That's, that's like, something yes. that like, that, like I love this movie, but they're gonna make me get annoyed with yeah. it. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, every single African, mm. every, yeah. everything it's associated Wakanda. with African is it's Wakanda. Wakanda. You know, um, oh, you know, you have you have a uh, bracelet. Oh, Wakanda, Wakanda forever. forever. You know, you have. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like people Wakanda are trying forever. to commodify? Um, Africa, what Africa is through this movie. Yeah, yes. taking it to the next level. Yeah. Okay, so can we just point out though that this the comic book was originally drawn and written by a white man, so hmm. it might have been. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a book over there that talks about that. I was. Gonna, I mean, like, if you're a done though. Uh, so say. yeah, okay. like um, <laughs> that's problematic for me to you know the movie is really talking about some oh these people in Wakanda they didn't come back and help us and da 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 da. I get it because that's the plot of the movie, but if we're talking about relations between. Africa and the U.S. That's not reflective. It needs to be the other way around. Mm. We need the help. Like mm -hmm. our education system is suffering. Our healthcare system is suffering. Roads. Like we are su roads. Like the road to my grandma's house is not even a road. Like it's somebody drove there a couple times and made it into somewhere to mm -hmm. get to the house. Like <laughs> no, I'm, so, I'm, I, being, I, I, I'm, I'm being I'm being real. Like I, I went to Ghana last summer. Yeah. Um. Uh. For uh. With my mom and stuff. And the way you, like some some of these like rows like I was leaning this yeah. way. Yeah. 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 Like you go to my grandma's house, you like, leave one, you leave two. Like yeah. and it's like and it's like that like 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 they're got like I know God itself is working on their roads, yeah. but the only but the thing is the issue is they're working on their like main roads like highways and like you know yeah. main travels like main places traveled like mm. a lot, but like. When you're going to like little neighborhoods and stuff like that, like those roads yeah, are terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. terrible. But, like, so. like if you if you're not too careful, like your whole car will literally flip over. Like I <laughs> saw a car mm -hmm. flip over. Yeah. Like that's mm -hmm. how big like the pothole and like the ditch was. Like mm -hmm. it's really really bad. Yeah. So for me, that's I don't know. Like that didn't really sit with me that well but I think you know that's the plot of the movie is mm -hmm. that Wakanda is popping so why mm -hmm. are they not um using Helping their resources women. to help their people and I feel like if that was true like if Africa was like really popping like that we probably would help our people but mm -hmm. at, this point, at this point we're even trying to feed our own selves so like we're really not in the position to be helping mm -hmm. our people here or you know Europe like, wherever, wherever but I do agree that people who are in the US or in Europe or whatever should give back to the continent because we really could use the help. I don't feel like I I don't think that, you know, we're incapable of being great. We just need that little extra like mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that little extra oomph. Um mm -hmm. but what else so did you ask about in relation to Black Panther? I was just asking your perspective as an African person. Oh, I mean, as an African person, and then, yeah, like I said, the thing about the accents, you know, if you're going to play your part, just play your part, just speak regularly and call it a day. Um, and there were uh, so many influences from all over Africa that it was really hard to, mm. like, wrap my mind. They're like, yeah, we took this lip fit, and, you know, the lip range from these people, and we took this hair from these people. It, it was just really, like... Mm. All that was the their purpose. Place. I remember the designer saying that was. The I purpose. mean that, and yeah, that's the designer's purpose. However, the consequences of that. There's yeah. consequences to that because if you say, "Oh, I'm gonna pick from Congo, and then I'm gonna pick from Ghana, and I'm gonna pick from here and here," there are so many countries in Africa, and even within those countries, there's so many tribes. I feel like the movie, like that's great. You're trying to capture, but you will never encompass mm -hmm. every single part of Africa. Mm -hmm. So to say, saying that. First of all, let's be real. There is no real Black Panther just running around the world saying more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, wish. no, I'm being dead ass. Wish. Like, I wish. No, right. like, when you look at Marvel stuff, let's be fucking real. Ain't no Hulk jumping around here, okay? Sure. I would be lit as fuck if it was. Ain't no Thor. Ain't no Captain America. You see what I'm saying? Like, all of this stuff is just symbolic of certain things. And, like, I think that... Trying to they were trying to period. they were trying to portray the time period, but also yeah. they're trying to put out something that's reflective of what's going on right now. That's true. And I feel like um, the way that 
yes, like you just said, there are hella fucking countries in Africa. There are hella fucking differences within those countries. You know what I'm saying? There are different tribes and different kingdoms and stuff like that. Yes. However, it was impossible to put that in one movie. Right. So I think it was a nice, I think it was a nice gesture to put every, like, well, not every, but a lot of them in there. But I also think, for me, um, in my personal opinion, even though I don't know much about all the kingdoms and, and, and the tribes within mm-hmm. every country in Africa, I feel like to point out some and not all, yes, that was kind of fucked up. However, it's just how how would you have done that? Yeah, and but, I, but but also I think it was nice to have all of them within one kingdom. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Because I feel like in a way that shows unity. Yeah, yeah. Because if if you want to be technical from a uh, from an American perspective, you would say that even if you do have all these technological advancements and stuff like that <laughs> that they're still divided within that country or within those countries right you see what i'm saying so i feel like for them to even put that into one i feel like that was beautiful and i don't know if that's just me speaking from my black american side but once again this is a comic book mm-hmm. so so i think that i think that I, I feel like it's purposeful to make it a serious point to talk about all of this stuff However, Black Panther, yes, it talks about a lot of history. It does. It does it's social but history. if you gonna talk about all the damn history, that movie might as well have been a twenty. That movie might as well have been roots. Don't it might as well have been roots. And I'm just being, I'm just being one hundred percent honest. This is. Oh a, no! Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this that is a comic that book. they didn't do. Pretty by just, white man. Right. I'm not saying they didn't do any justice by the way that they did it. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying from like an mm-hmm. African perspective, like mm-hmm. if we're just taking it for what it is, Africans can easily sit here and be like, well didn't incorporate this part and you didn't incorporate that part and I get your point like mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to do that however this is a movie that's being shown yeah worldwide yeah. right yeah. and so however this movie is depicted to people whether it is a comic book or not people that is that's yeah. what's going to stick in people's minds and I feel like that's why we're seeing things on my timeline of people mm-hmm. watching little African children dancing or whatever whatever that's, that's and being like Wakanda forever or wow look at these Wakandans mm-hmm. because that movie has like do you get what I'm but, saying? But it's like, also, t- but I guess in a way, it's also a way to show unification as well as some mm-hmm. people may be a little, like, ignorant to it. Like, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people, like, I'm not gonna lie, my parents, they probably don't know shit about what was going on in that movie. Mm-hmm. I know. But for them, it's, you know, it's, it's, just, it's a superhero movie. However, it's also a way to show that there can be some type of unification between black people and Africa. Does that make uh-huh. sense? So, for when people say Wakanda forever, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like, yes, we all, well, not we all. Some people know that that's not a real country. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? However, for some people, it could mean something different. So it's just like, you know, even though this is not like, like these are real, this is real shit that goes on in the world. Yes, but not everybody knows about it. But right. for people who don't know about it, it could be a way to unify. For other people, it's just like a wake-up call. Like, yo, we need to fix this shit. You know, does that make sense? I was Sorry say, for I was going to say that the movie did uh, hint at social social issues within America, Mm -hmm. like, so it hinted at slavery, and it hinted at racism, and it hinted at colonialism. Mm -hmm. So I will say that, and also, I was looking at this clip a while back of when people, it was some Asian country, I don't remember which, but um, this one Asian man was talking about how he never found a black woman attractive until he saw a black panther. And I read the comments, and it was like, oh, this is stupid, oh, it took you a movie to realize black women were beautiful, but I'm like, sometimes that, that does, it only does take a, a movie to show people that black people are beautiful. Yeah, movies and the media is very right. powerful. Change so, perception. I just found out that was interesting, you know, when we sitting here talk about what people say, like, we call them forever, but that's, like, one of the things that, I guess, came good of that mm-hmm. movie was pointing out the fact that black women are beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Also, so, representation yeah. matters. Like, y'all have no idea what that did for kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want my comments to make it seem like, oh, this movie useless no i think the movie is very like useful representation does matter i'm just saying that critical yeah yeah if we're talking about an african perspective like this is surface level like africa Mm -hmm. like very very surface level africa so i feel like the movie is great to address that there is greatness in africa but i think you should also take that movie and then be like okay let me go Learn more, or see what else mm-hmm. is going on in Africa. Like, where else is, you know, popping in Africa? Even though we know Wakanda is not real, but like, let me go see if there's really countries in Africa that are popping like this. I feel like the movie can lead to that. But yeah, it's representation, like, by all means. Like, 
it's, it's great. I don't want you to feel like I'm mm-hmm. disagreeing. I was agreeing with everybody. I was oh, agreeing yeah. with everything. I was just saying that for some people, it just means something different. Like, for yeah. instance, all of us went up in there. All of us said we're kind of forever. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. We all said it at yeah. one point. We're, edu- we're educated on these matters. But for somebody who is not, it's just more so of a unification <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. It's like representation for them. It makes them feel good. Right. So it's just kind of like, well, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. You know, but like, and the thing is right now, it's a franchise as well. Mm-hmm. There, Marvel has had this planned out mm-hmm. for years. Mm-hmm. They from from the very first Iron Man movie. Mm-hmm. They're all leading up to the one that's coming out soon, Infinity. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, like Black Panther, it, it it is a big like statement. The fact that he's a black superhero and he finally got his shine that is that is great. But I think that because of the time period that it came out, mm-hmm. people are looking. To me, I feel like people are looking a little too deep. Mm -hmm. So you think Mm -hmm. the social climate right now has kind of made Black Panther like bigger? Yeah, like a lot bigger. Mm, Okay, as 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 like it was back then. I mean, even back then, it was it was still a big thing because you know there was a lot of white um, superhero characters, Mm -hmm. and and the creator created a black superhero character. So that was also like a statement back then, and like now it's a statement now because once they create the movie, and like not only did they bring the characters back around into it. They also did include, like, you know, like, they included today's issues into it, like, to try and play on it a little bit, to make it a little mm, bit more modernized. Okay. But at the same time, like, Black Panther is somebody who has been and will be. Like, he not, he wasn't, like, new, and it's not really, like, yeah, like, as, like, people are just, like, it's not, I feel like it's not, like, that OCD, mm. you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I like I like the fact person I like the fact that they tried to like play on like so many different um like try to incorporate like so many different um African things into like the different parts of the tribes and stuff like that because personally I don't know like I'm from Ghana you know and Africa is a very big place for very big continents and mm-hmm. like it always annoys me when people think that I know everything about Africa just because mm-hmm. I'm from one country mm-hmm. I don't I don't really know much about others outside of my country. So like when like when I would see like the threads explaining like oh where the slip ring is from oh where these um, neck chains are from like oh I was like okay that's cool like oh, it was from here it's from here like I'm learning more about other places. Granted, it wasn't all of them like you're saying, but like it was as much as you know as possible. And to be honest, African countries, although there are different tribes, different ethnicities, different dialects, everything, a lot of them also like utilize similar things. So although like the neck um, things is from they took it from one specific like place, there are other places that use something similar like that, mm. you know, and like maybe different meanings or like similar meanings, but like it's something that was used by many others. Like even now, like um, our African print, like there's a lot of places that have like similar African prints. Kente is something that is like you know traditionally Ghanaian, but like pe- like other people are trying are starting to like do it a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, but everybody knows that it started in Ghana. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's still, like, other people are still using it. And that's the thing, like, you know, although they may have taken it from one place, there's, all, there's so many true. other, like, tribes and stuff that also did, like, those similar things, like, you know. So I, I like the fact that they tried to, like, get, like, the collective whole as, as much as they could. And I was like, that, I thought that was interesting to me. And, yeah, I just think that, like, <coughs> The so, day and age that it came out in, it was great and it was empowering to like to everybody, mm-hmm. you know, not even just like Black Americans but like Africans as well. Because to see Africa portrayed as something great yeah. like this, you know, usually if you're like if people are like, oh, you live in huts, so you know, you you run with the dress, you run with the lions, like you know, to right. see to <laughs> see like you Listen. know, to see infrastructure, to see fast moving trains, to see like all these money, all this like power, all this like. <laughs> And and it wasn't even just that. It was there was also there was also um the Jabari lands, there was also like that was also like tribish. Mm. But the thing is, those huts weren't what we were described to me like as younger, like oh mm. like men and sand. Like those were like they they were nice, you mm. know? So the fact that everything even even if it was a tribe type thing, it looked nice. And it and it's sp- and like the fact that I spoke that, you know, Africa is not just, you know, dirt basically mm-hmm. like that's that's what i like and so yeah i just took it as like as a fan 
that um T'Challa says is always beats me. He was like, I never freeze. And it's like at that point his accent was different mm. from like the rest of his accents. Like I could kinda hear like the different like, you know, like when he would kinda like when it would change a little bit. And I was just like, Oh, that's that's funny, that's cute. Like, mm. okay. But um it, but it wasn't it wasn't terrible at the same time. Like I've heard very trash accents where I have actually got like a little mad like from um Dear White People, the guy mm. they hired to be that African boy. Oh, they could have just boy. been yeah. they could have just got an actual African. Yeah, this very, concept that if you're African you have to have a, like you have to yeah. have to make it authentic. Yeah. You know? yeah, like you don't we don't we don't all have accents. Mm. You know? And even and even those that live within like the countries of Africa and they speak, they speak their uh, language fluently, they can also speak English very well, and their accent is not a harsh accent. Mm. Like, my mother, her her accent is not harsh, like, at all. Mm. You know? Like, it's, like it's very... Like, it's it's very proper, I feel like. Mm. That's what it... That's what I, I, I would describe it as. Not like a... You know, not like a hard, like, you know... I don't want to do it. How do y'all feel about this whole idea of black people appropriating... Um, African culture. Now, I'm taking this from this article this girl wrote about Afropunk, and she basically was upset because, you know, you, you know what Afropunk is, right? Mm-hmm. So, you, you know the Afropunk pictures, and some people wearing the tribal markings, and the sometimes they'll mix-match certain um, traditional jewel, jewelry, the waist beads, um, the print, right? She basically, and I think she's Nigerian, she basically said, um, she feels like, basically, like, people, black people are for a trend. Now the comments against that are saying, "Well, you don't, you can't. I don't know. You don't know if these people are African. Like you just don't know." But I think the issue is like when certain people wear certain jewelry that or print that's just not like just maybe like for a funeral and you're wearing it out or showing your waist beads when you're not supposed to, like stuff like that. How do y'all feel about that? Okay, so can black people culturally? What's the word? Appropriate, appropriate African culture. Appropriate Africans attire, whatever. No, I don't think that they can. I think that what they do do is like wear African print, wear waist beads, whatever, whatever. Like that's fine. That's all dandy. I don't have a problem with black people doing that. But when you wear, you need to understand like what is the symbolism behind it, what is the history behind it. And if you understand that and you go wear, we cool. But don't wear it and don't know the meaning behind it. For instance, you know they were talking about waist beads in or out. Show them, not show them. Like culturally, you don't show your waist beads. Um, because for a lot of places, it's seen as a sign of purity. Like, only your husband is supposed to see it. Some people, they wear it as a way to control their weight. But regardless, it's not supposed to be shown. So, like, I'm cool with black people wearing whatever they want to wear. Just make sure you know, like, where it comes from. Um, I'm kind of, like, in between. Because I feel like, yeah, like, um, we were talking outside of this video and it was made a statement like, yeah, like if you're using it to like make fun of or like not be a, not be serious, then yeah, it's, it's culture appropriation because then what's what's your purpose, you know? Like why are you why are you wearing it if you're not gonna appreciate it and whatnot? But then there are people that generally like are like want to like know more, want to wear for like a reason because they've gotten a connection and they feel pride. Like um, I know many students at JMU do study abroad in Ghana and like. And not and not even just like the mm-hmm. um, the black kids in Jamie, but like you know some of some of like the white kids and stuff. Like there's this girl in my one of my bio classes, first day of fall semester, she came out with some mm. pants, and I was like, mm. okay, that's cool. And I talked to her, and she was like, yeah, I got it from Ghana, da, da, this. and like I was like, okay, that's cool. Like I like I like it. Go you, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's All true. right. Okay, I agree with her. <laughs> All right, Sarah or uh... um, I don't think that Black people can culturally appropriate Afri- African culture. Is that mm-hmm. what you're talking about in terms of dress? Um, the Black community isn't getting any richer off of wearing head wraps or buying um dashikis or buying kente cloth or buying buying African clothes. But when we talk about a cultural appropriation. You make money off of that. It's about power. Power. Capital. You get power off of that. Okay. Black community ain't get no power off of wearing African uh, garments or African beads or I get what I'm saying, like African things. We're not getting any power off of it, so we cannot culturally appropriate, appropriate it. Also, um, 
I feel like sometimes when we talk about this, it becomes a tit for tat. Like, oh, well, you can't wear that shiki. Well, oh, you can't listen to Beyonce. Oh, you can't wear bees. Oh, well, you can't cross. I was just. You can't cross our Greek organizations because mm-hmm. they were founded by black people. Or like, you can't eat some of our foods because we made it. You know, I just feel like it becomes a tit for tat. But on I both don't sides. Think, on both sides, mm-hmm. yes. But I do not think that black people can culturally appropriate African. Oh, um, I just feel confused about the whole matter. <laughs> okay. I used to say yeah, but now I say no. But I only say no because I feel like if I knew where I came from, I would just, you know, it would be easier. Mm. So I don't know where I come from. I just know that, you know, my great great grandmother was raped by a white man who happened to be her slave owner. Mm. So that's just how, that's what I know. So therefore, I feel as though no. But and then the other sense is because I don't really have the time to research it or like have found time to research it, I'm not going to put it on Mm -hmm. or like use it. Or, or talk about it or, you know, celebrate it because it's like, until I get that knowledge, I'm not going to put it on personally. And that's my personal, mm-hmm. um, my thought on it. It's like, I'm, if you're not going to take the time to research it, like everybody said, or try to understand the history or the cultural meaning behind it or the relevance, then don't put it on. But then you look down. This boy, like, he really liked me and he wanted, you know, he wanted me to be his little girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> he was like... No, he was black. And his brother told him, like, no, you can't date her because she's African. She probably has AIDS. And so I've had that. I've had people been like, oh, you grew up in a hut. Like, you know, you're dirty. And, like, the same thing. Like, they would have, like, culture days. And I would, like, I would come to school in my, in my drawing. And people would, like, make fun of me. Like, I would bring food that my mom took the time to make and I would bring it to school. This is food that I have to eat for lunch. I can't even eat my lunch because people mm. have such negative things to say oh your food smells like mm-hmm. oh what is that what you know like mm-hmm. all kinds of crazy stuff and so it really took me coming to college to be like you know what i'm gonna own this shit and mm-hmm. i'm gonna pop it however that doesn't mean that i don't think back to my childhood mm-hmm. and sometimes like i have to still question myself like oh am i gonna rap like especially being in grad school like undergrad is different mm-hmm. because i feel like like i interacted with more people who look like me or from, from where i was from but being in grad school, sometimes I have to take a step back and be like, am I going to wear my head wrap today? Mm. Am I going to wear this shirt today or this pants, skirt, whatever today? Because the people in my grad program don't get it. So now it's almost like I've like reverted back to being like mm. that child because I have to consider more like, am I going to wrap my hair? And even going to work, like, is this professional? Is this not professional? Mm. Like, is it okay if I wear my dashiki to work? Is it okay if I put my head wrap on? And so like, I feel like a lot of people can joke about it and be like, oh, but you know, you grew up just fine. But it's like, yo, it was it was hard in these streets. Mm-hmm. And then to see not just black people, but just like people in general be like wearing the shiki or, oh, your food is nice. Or, oh, mm-hmm. where did you get that pant? Okay, but when I was in second grade, it wasn't cute. <laughs> and today it's cute. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's a little triggering a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, but it's going to be okay. Just go on by fine. <laughs> yeah, um anybody else. My story is uh I guess can relate to these tattoos. Um my great 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 grandmother was one of the last slaves to come on one of the last slave ships mm-hmm. uh come to America. So um we kinda like try to trace back her ancestry exactly and we traced it um well and what these symbols are, they're called Nisimbity symbols. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's Nisimbity. Mm-hmm. and uh, I did a lot of research on it and it's basically an ancient language that's not really spoken anymore it's still spoken secretly kind of but it's not a widely spoken yeah. um, and it was also spoken by the Igbo and the Igbo tribe Igbo tribe Igbo Igbo and uh, in tracing her ancestry in tracing our ancestry back to where she came from we kind of concluded that she came from Nigeria and she most likely came from one of those two Mm-hmm. So that's why I got these. But these are speaking spoken in other tribes too, but that's the two that oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean talk about tattoos. I don't really tattoos on mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or can I just talk about my blackness? Yeah, you thought people Native American. Yeah, you talk about your blackness. Okay, so um never I was always, always ashamed of being a black person. Mm-hmm. Always growing up. Because mm-hmm. uh, honestly, I think it was my parents sheltering me. Like, and always trying to make me assimilate and be like, okay, you're a black woman. Like, my parents were always like, you know, education, you know, stuff like that. Like, value your education. Um, mm-hmm. You got to get a successful job. That's why it's, it's so funny. It's like oh, a center yeah. in my thing. Because, like, my parents were always like, get you an occupation where they need you, where you need them. 
So that was beating to my head all the time. But like, I really did not come into my blackness until like my sophomore year after I met Ashley because <laughs> she scared me. <laughs> she scared she you. She did scare me. Like I thought she was real mean. <gasps> and, like no, but, ah, no, but they they like, she was a little too. I was, like Mala can attest to this with a whole bunch of black people that are stable and like they actually like took the time to get to know me because like. Throughout high school, middle school, I felt like I was too white to be black mm. and too black to be white. Come on, Oreo. I was in this. Oreo. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm Oreo, black. quote unquote. Black. Black. Well, I'm black. Yeah. So like it was just it was really because it's like you I like I like pa- right. no it's like I like Paramore, Evanescence, but I also oh. listen to Beyonce. I love Lady Gaga, but I also yeah, like you know J Cole at the time not anymore. But you know <laughs> stuff like that. So it was just like it. when I got to college and I I, I I came and met these black women, it was too many. It was overwhelming because my whole life, black women always joked me. They was mm. bullying me. They was skin. Like, everybody there was, uh, like, was melanated. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm real pale mm-hmm. compared to others. No, she was lighter than that. Yeah, so um, when I sat down at the yeah. table and I was like, I was like, I don't want to see what these. Like, I'm glad that I did. Honestly, it changed my life. Um, And I got educated. And uh, it's just, I'm just grateful. And yes. I'm grateful, honestly, because I would have been sleep. Sleep. And probably run around here trying to chase some of these white people Stay up. Saying it that they didn't want me around mm. so I'm grateful Aww. to all of you and to all the black women that I've encountered in my life because honestly like the, I really feel like James Madison University was there, it was a purpose for it even though I hated it mm. it was a purpose for it come on mm. I, I had a very very thick ass accent like there's an old video oh, it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like you know thick accents um, straight uh, fresh from the boat, fall, mm. whatever. Um, yeah, and then, like, I started going, I started going to schools, and it's funny, because, like, I was in public school at first, and, like, I don't, I don't remember ever really having, like, much problems with, like, the other public school kids, because there was other, like, African kids up there, like, I had other African friends, like, in that neighborhood, I had these other Ghanaian girls that was, there was one down here, there was two sisters, like, up the street, like, mm-hmm. there were people around still, and, um, and it wasn't, I don't, I don't think it was until I started going to private school. And, um, yeah, like, third grade, like, all of a sudden, my name, all of a sudden, like, all these things was, like, you know. And, like, I, like I, I would cry about it. Sometimes I get defensive about it. I try to beat people up. I kick them in the shit and shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, but, like, it was still, like, really, like, really hurtful. And it's still, like, uh, really sensitive, like, to this day, like. You know, like, a lot of things I was said, and it's funny because, like, it really wasn't from the white kids either, like, mm. that. Like, it was, it really was from, like, some of the people, like, and it was, like, I was trying to be their friend. And, mm. like, we, we did become friends, but it's still, but, like, I mean, I realized that now that it was, like, fake friendships because mm. you still say this and make me cry. Mm. But then we come back the next day and we're, we're friends, you know. Mm. So, yeah, like, um, and I don't think it was until, like, a couple, um, Years into high school, like uh, I guess almost like going to college, um, where I started like reclaiming it more, like being more like um, more positive, being more like like I want like I want to change my name. It's funny. I actually wish that I was named Ashley. <laughs> Girl, no. <laughs> no, 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 no cause, um, yeah, because I mean, I was just I just picked yeah. another name that started with A. Oh, okay. You know? uh-huh. But I was like, you know, like if I had the name like Ashley or something, like maybe it would have been easier, something mm-hmm. like that, like. Nobody would always be having me like, oh, how do you pronounce your name? How do you, yeah. like, all these things. Like, um, it's so funny that you mentioned the name thing because I have two middle names. And I never claim, I never, name. okay, because when I came, <laughs> like, what are your two middle names? First of all, what are your two middle oh, names? Relax, relax. See, she don't be <laughs> one to tell me. So, like, like, but that's one of those things, but that's one of those things from, like, my childhood that, like, even to this day, I'm almost 25 years old. And not a lot of people know that I have two middle names. Like, I have, like, my regular, you know, white people middle name. And then I have my African one. And the only reason why people know now is because JMU is real slick. And they added it to my little yeah. email. Uh. Like, emails, they be like, wait, what? Yeah. But that's crazy because I always used to, I, to this day, low-key still deny, like, my other middle name. Because I don't, I don't want to have to explain what it. I don't, huh? What is it? No quick. You know, people used yeah. to make fun of me for that. Mm-hmm. So like, yes, I just didn't put it on anything. It's mm-hmm. only on like my yeah. birth certificate, my yeah. social security, but like any regular everyday documents, you're gonna get Zelda Nadi Attacky and that's it. You're not gonna get the no quick one. I think that's like the one thing from my past that I'm like, eh. 
I'm not ready yeah. to really expose um, the world to that. And I even noticed, like, the other day, I still, like, be playing around with my food. Mm-hmm. Because, of, like, the people I live with are not African. So, like, there's some dishes that I be making. I'm like, well, let me go ahead and clean this up because I don't know the scents and the smells and the sight, you know? <laughs> I feel like it's low key some like I don't yeah, know. Like, I don't want to say remember, PTSD, but like mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I remember I, I, I even I even stopped speaking the language mm-hmm. to the fact where like I couldn't speak it no more. Yeah, mm-hmm. like even now like I'm relearning. Like I can understand it still, mm-hmm. but even now like there's certain like so there's some words or if you say too fast like I've always told people like some songs like when I first used to listen to um, songs in Chi, I couldn't understand like what they were saying mm-hmm. at all. But now like if I really like listen to it slowly like break it down i'm like okay I, i'll understand some yeah. of the phrases but um like i understand it pretty well but like speaking it now i'm not as fluent mm-hmm. and like i said like i was born in ghana and like being born and brought here like i should still be fluent like there's some of my cousins that were born here and like they speak it so much that i feel like a disgrace basically yeah. <laughs> what did your parents do when you stopped speaking it what happened with that i mean they like they still spoke they still it's, spoke it to me weird. But like I would just reply back in English. Yeah, same. And at the and there was a point in time where um, my mother's mother, my maternal grandmother, came to live with us um, for a couple of years um, before she uh, went back and died. I think um, <laughs> it's okay. But um, but yeah, like when she was here, you know, she she she's straight from Ghana. She doesn't she doesn't speak English. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't like I couldn't really I wouldn't really like speak to her like that because and it's funny because when I was in Ghana that's who I was with mm. you know and um, she came here and it's like oh like I don't even speak your language anymore like you yeah. know that's 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 my grandchild and she don't even want to like yeah. claim uh, her language anymore. Well, they be whatnot. coming for you because like me I it's gonna come out like 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 Spanglish like I yeah. mix the two I mm-hmm. can just mix it all like together it's so bad and bad like <laughs> like yeah. like like to y'all like I don't sound I might not sound African I mean recently I've heard I started hearing people be like okay you have a slight accent before people used to tell me I didn't have an accent at all and it's like I kind of worked for that like when I was really younger so that people would stop like you know saying stuff about me and uh it's just funny to hear that I have a slight accent nowadays you but know. um yeah, but yeah, but like, but when I speak Chi, there's also because of the fact that I lost my African accent to gain an American one, I can't speak some of the words even if even if I know how to say them and I know what they mean, I can't speak it as well. Mm-hmm. So it sounds funny to them, mm-hmm. and they'd be like, "Oh, like, you know, what are you, what are you saying? What are you saying? Yeah. Like, like, they're, like now they're trying to make fun of you too. Like, and like at that point, I even stopped trying to like just try because it's like, yeah. well, the same thing happened when my aunt came for winter break so she came around Christmas time and I haven't seen her in years and she's like no like you really really need to learn like you really need to learn I'm like auntie like you don't understand like I'm 24 so like that form those formative years where you're supposed to learn language it's gone so like it's going to be harder for me to learn now and it's the same thing like I know the words but when I say it it comes out funny and like yeah, people, or you can't say it like as a fluid sentence, sentence. Yeah. i had to mix it with english yeah and so like <laughs> i get made fun of it from the other side like oh you don't even know your language and you're not really one of us blah 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 but then i mean i spent a lot of my life trying to avoid you know people here in america being like you have an accent but recently you know people are like oh yeah you have this accent i'm not quite sure where it's from mind you i've basically lived here my whole life so <laughs> I mean, now I just don't really care. I'm like, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it, it is, is what, what it is. is. Now, like, like, <laughs> I like, and, like, now, the fact that I still try is something to me. Because mm-hmm. before, like, like I said, I didn't try at all. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I like about myself now. That, like, I'm still, like, I'm going to try to, like, do more now. But, like, back then, like, it was just, mm-hmm. like, I was just really trying to back away. Mm-hmm. When so I should have been. Mm-hmm. So like, well, thank y'all so much for sharing. Give yeah. yourself a round of applause. No crying, y'all. It's okay. And if you could say your name one more time. Sarah Johnson. Bill Sackie. Ariel Cromer. And we have Lala in the corner. Can't see her, but okay. she contributed too. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a wrap. Thank you for tuning thank in. You. Bye.